Brother John, watchman for that great day. I'm here this morning, and it's a Monday morning, and it's going to be a nice day. It's going to be sunny. But you know what? I'm anticipating our Lord Jesus Christ at any moment I am. Just so vibrating. I am vibrating. I'm like, man, something's about to happen. I think we can all kind of get on this boat. It could be today. It could be tomorrow. We could have some weeks. Who knows? The bottom line is he's coming. And man, is it. This is historic, brothers and sisters. This time, we are living in history-making times. Just like when Israel became a nation in 1948, May 14th, 1948. Imagine, imagine being there and see and uh, uh, being at that point when when Israel had not been a nation for you know some 1800 and whatever years, and all of a sudden it's that day, this day, Israel is a nation. Imagine being there. But we, some of us, have not been born prior to 1948. So I was born in 56, so I wasn't there. But I'm in the time now, and you're in the time now, where history, the same idea as when the fig tree put forth its leaves or came to be, all right, it's the same thing. It is, this is, this is important. This time is, it's just important. So let me read something out of the Times of Israel, and the headline reads, Trump to tell Israelis they have six weeks to get peace plan moving. This was written on January the 27th, 2020. I'm just going to read a little bit of it, maybe some uh, uh, some little clips of, of it, but I'll read a little bit. So Trump will reportedly tell Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and Blue and White Chief Benny Gantz that they have until Knesset elections to work on administration's long-awaited peace plan, potentially throwing the high-stakes diplomatic gambit into Israel's domestic political stew. According to the report by Reuters News uh, Agency, citing a U.S. official, Trump will not announce details of the plan until after he receives a buy-in, quote-unquote, buy-in from both Netanyahu and Gantz. In other words, he's looking for their support. So that's what one of the reasons is for them coming today and tomorrow, Netanyahu tomorrow, but Gantz today, so that it does not lose any momentum. The idea is so that it doesn't lose any momentum. This thing is now rolling. See, just to picture it, we've been waiting a long time for this peace plan to be rolled out. Now that it's rolling, it's only going to build momentum. So, therefore, meeting with these two leaders of the, the Blue and White Party and Netanyahu, either leader could win the election, all right? But even more, it gets deeper as we think about it, but let's just read a little more here. According to the unnamed official, Trump will tell the two, you have six weeks to get this plan going if you want it. So, of course they want it, all right? Uh, Netanyahu has wanted it, we know that. And uh, Gantz made a statement at the end of this article, which I will read. Um, but hear this part first. So it is unclear what either side could accomplish in, e uh, in even jump-starting talks based on the deal with neither having the confidence of the nation until March 2nd election. However, a number of politicians have expressed fears that releasing the plan before the vote will turn it into a political football as electoral campaigns ramp up. Which I can see, sure, using that uh, pro or con, you know, either way to, uh, you know, get themselves elected. The year, the last year has seen Netanyahu and Gantz facing off in successive elections for almost a year, with, with neither side able to form a majority government. There's a reason for this, brothers and sisters, and I'll get to that in a moment. Neither side being able to form a, a majority government at this point. It's interesting because it leaves that opening for a man called Mashiach, all right? Uh, which is definitely on the way, all right? And he will not be able to be revealed until we are out of the picture, the, those that are 
spirit-filled, waiting for the Lord, looking to go home and, and waiting for the rapture, the trumpet, all right, which could blow today. All right, it could blow any time now, between now and then, between now and March, whatever. We're living one day at a time, one day at a time, one hour at a time sometimes, one minute or, you know, little bit of time at moments at some times. But we're getting through, and God is giving us the grace to get through each day. So realize that much. He loves us. He's with us. He's getting us through. He's, if we're, if we're, you know, so strung out, then God is carrying us, all right? So both Netanyahu and Gantz are scheduled to meet with Trump separately and privately in the White House on Monday. Actually, it's Gantz today and tomorrow uh, Netanyahu. So Netanyahu will meet uh, with Trump at 11 a.m. I think it's Gantz. See, they, they might have said this in order to flip around to get people uh, confused about the order, but two meetings included including one without aides, which is Netanyahu, and then Gantz will arrive at the White House 12.30 p.m. See, so it's a both, supposedly, according to the article, it's both today. Uh, I think it's today and tomorrow. At least tomorrow we will have the release. I'm pretty sure about that. So for a 45-minute discussion, all right, Netanyahu and Trump are set, are set for a higher-profile uh, meeting Tuesday. All right, so maybe they're both going to uh, uh, get information today, and then tomorrow to be Netanyahu uh, in a, in a higher profile. In other words, the news will be open up to the newses and everything else. So tomorrow is going to be the big day as far as uh, releasing information to the general public is what I see. So which will include a joint statement. So this is going to be very interesting these next couple of days. Enjoy today and look forward to tomorrow, uh, whether we're here or not, because when this thing is released, it could just be that that will be when sudden destruction comes, because when they are saying peace and safety, all right, that's the thing. We all know the scriptures. It's just a matter of how is it going to roll out with God's timing, and will we go a little further, all right? That's the question. That's the thought. Our hope is that we're raptured today. So, back to the article. The U.S. source, who is familiar with the administration's deliberations on the matter, told Reuters that by meeting with both Gantz and Netanyahu, it was hoped that Trump's announcement of the proposal would not be seen as a political move. The rationale is it depoliticizes this to the point that no matter what happens on March the 2nd, the two leaders of the two largest parties can potentially be supportive, and that's what the source said, so supportive about this plan. The timing of the, uh, of the announcement has been criticized in Israel as an attempt to rescue Netanyahu from immunity proceedings. Many politicians and commemor uh, commentators also say it appears to be an effort by the U.S. leader to boost Netanyahu's prospects ahead of the March 2nd election. It's just, that's already becoming a political issue, all right, because the whole thing with him being indicted and, you know, whatever. At the same time, Trump himself is in the middle of an impeachment trial. On Sunday, former U.S. envoy uh, Nikki Haley said the administration had, dro had grown tired of waiting for the for Israel to move beyond its political deadlock. Trump is expected to, to deliver remarks after his Tuesday meeting with Netanyahu, where he may reveal some, some details of the plan. The plan, which Trump earlier said uh, he would release before Tuesday meeting, is expected to strongly favor Israel and is unlikely to garner any international support. So remember that. We're going to hear tremendous things against the peace plan, all right? The Palestinians themselves have said it's dead on arrival. It's not even, it doesn't mean anything to them. But the times are exactly where we are, brothers and sisters. This is, mark my words, I know that Brother Chad has said, and I've got many uh, people pointing out that Brother Chad says, this is not the Daniel 9.27. I'm going to tell you right now, if this is not the Daniel 9.27 peace plan, then I don't know what it would be because, remember, everything is in favor of Israel to the point of, let me continue on in the article and you'll see, 
all right? So it's expected to be strongly in favor of Israel and is unlikely to garner any international support if it is seen as undermining the prospected two-state solution. So, you understand what's going on? There's the two-state solution side, which is the division of the land, all right? Which you could argue that this plan does in little ways, all right? It's dividing the land because if it's not all, you know, the land, it's dividing the land. In fact, the land is already divided, you understand? The, the land has been divided by uh, the 67 guidelines, you know, even in that time, all right? Remember, Israel at one point had, you know, from the, uh, from Jordan down to Egypt, a lot more land, put it that way. All right, Trump said his administration has has talked briefly with the Palestinians who reject the administration's peace plan altogether. I just said that. But remember, there's a lot going on in the background here, and the pressure is going to be put on them through financial, which is, has been already for a couple of years now, to cut back on the, on the monies that the United States gives to Palestinians has been taken away, and so they're forced uh, to look other wares, all right? So at any rate, the Palestinian leadership has long called for the establishment of a Palestinian state along the 1967 borders with East Jerusalem as its capital and a just solution to the refugee issue. According to various uh, Hebrew uh, language media reports, the peace plan is the most generous U.S. proposal ever for for Israel, likely allowing Israel to annex all of the West Bank. Now remember, this is this is all speculation, all right? But mostly it gives an indication of they're going to be allowed to annex parts of the West Bank, not all of it, but it says all of it, all the West Bank settlements, which is in parts. It's not the whole West Bank, but it's in parts. Remember the, the map that uh, uh, was given to Erwin Baxter, uh, from from a, uh, someone, I can't remember who it was that sent it to him, but he had that map that showed the West Bank. With, it was black, but there's dots, little white dots on it, and that was the, the settlements of Israel, and that's the area of the Jews that would be in Judea, Samaria, that would be part of this um, agreed agreement. All right? So at any rate, so the U.S. proposal ever... Uh, for Israel, likely allowing Israel to annex all the West Bank settlements, which is true, and backing sovereignty throughout Jerusalem, which is also true. According to the reports, the plan also offers potential uh, eventual recognition of Palestinian statehood, provided the Palestinians demilitarize Gaza, you think that's going to happen? <laughs> all right, and accept Israel as a Jewish state. Now, these are simple enough Thought-wise, you know, let's demilitarize. This is part of the problem, though, because Hamas is not going to want to demilitarize, all right? And and the Palestinians, you know, uh, not having... Uh, but this is part of negotiation, too. This is the starting point. It's a foundation, all right? It's the 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 rock of the, the agreement, all right? Which kind of is interesting in, its, in, in that thought anyway. Um, so conditions the Palestinians would presumably reject, right? To militarize Gaza and accept Israel as a Jewish state. They haven't as of yet, all right? But those are the uh, two main things, demilitarize Gaza and accept Israel as a Jewish state. <laughs> Jordan's King Abdullah. Now this is, a, this is another interesting section of this and, and thought-wise, so Jordan's King Abdullah on Sunday noted his opposition to any elements of the plan which were in, which were at the expense of Jordan. Jordan also, Jordan along with Egypt is one of only two Arab nations that have a peace treaty with Israel, but r relations between the neighbors have become increasingly tense, particularly with Netanyahu's repeatedly vowing to annex the Jordan Valley. So see, through peace, right, through this, through this uh, policy, through this agreed, through this uh, stand, all right, there, there's many that are going to be, uh, it's going to bring about kingdom against kingdom, 
and, and nation against nation. Hold on, brothers and sisters. Let me just see who this is. I'm not sure, but I'm going to let it ring. Let it answer. Let it. Hold on, brothers and sisters. And I gotta, I gotta continue this video. So let it just answer, and hopefully we'll get through. Might leave a message. No, nope, not leaving a message. Okay, no message. All right, all right. So I'm going to continue. All right, hold on. All right, all right. So it's just a brother. I gotta call him. I gotta call him back. That's brother Gilbert. That he wants to be a moderator on my, uh, on my, um, my live feeds when I do them. So anyway, I'm back to the video. Thank you. All right. Thank you for bearing with me on that one. So. So Netanyahu on Sunday vowed to make history. And so therefore we are living in historic times, brothers and sisters, since 70 uh, years has expired. And it's getting ready to expire even if we go from when Israel had its first elected official, Menachem Begin, back in 1969. So yes, we're on the 27th day of January. And this weekend has passed the 25th, you know, the 24th, 25th dates that we were looking at. But it doesn't mean that things can't still happen. It just, we're still here, so we continue to watch. Anytime a date comes and goes, it shouldn't get us down, especially with what's at in the front of us. All right, the next few weeks, the next six weeks, the next few days, the next few hours, we don't know. But we certainly are seeing great things, and we are seeing we are living in historic times. And that's important to keep in mind, because... To even for us to even be saying this peace plan is about to come out and I'm telling you it is the Daniel 9 27 peace plan because it has in it the arrangement for the um, the third temple it's going to make a way for that third temple to be built mark my words all right Netanyahu's main political rival, Gantz, also took off for Washington on Sunday for a separate meeting with the U.S. president. So that's who's meeting with him today. Gantz is meeting with the president today. Gantz on Saturday announced that Trump had invited him to meet in person as a leader of the largest party in Israel. Previously, Israel's de facto opposition leader had been invited uh, to join Netanyahu's meeting with Trump and had reportedly dis, uh, disinclined to do so. So, uh, better that he meets. But watch this. This is, this is what I found very interesting. So, asked at Ben-Gurion Airport whether he would, this is talking about Gantz, uh, endorse the plan or ask Trump to push off its release until after the March 2nd elections, Gantz demurred. This is now a quote from, from uh, Gantz. I'll hear from him about the plan and exchange views, but... What is done behind closed doors will stay behind closed doors. So he's not going to say nothing. So he told Khan, public broadcaster, the meeting set to be Gantz's first with the U.S. president uh, will be closed to the press, Blue and White said on Saturday. Gantz said Saturday that Trump's plan would come to constitute a significant milestone. So this is something that is prevalent to our time, the history-making, uh, bringing forth of this peace plan, setting out the path for conflicting sides in the Middle East. This is now, uh, this is the quote from, from Gantz. To march toward a regional historic deal, the U.S. framework he, uh, uh, deal, the U.S. framework, he also said, is likely to cause major and painful internal disagreements. So this is like the idea of nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom, not not a kingdom, uh, Russia against uh, Turkey kingdom, not that kind of a uh, a kingdom against kingdom or nation against nation, nation within itself against itself. All right, uh, upheaval internally. That's what I'm seeing. So. It's likely to cause painful internal disagreements. There's going to be people within the same uh, uh, governmental 
you know, in Jordan. There's going to be two different people. People that want this peace plan and let it work, and people that don't want the peace plan, don't let it work. There's going to be problems with this. This is going to bring about when they shall say, peace and safety, then sudden destruction, nation against nation within itself, kingdom against kingdom within itself. You understand this? So, but to work, to make the framework a basis for progress toward an agreed deal with the Palestinians and regional states while maintaining a deepening and strategic partnerships with Jordan, Egypt, and other states in the region. That's the quote. So he is going to support the, this plan. And he, he, this is a foundation stone of the peace plan. And it's starting to roll out. We haven't seen it completed or come to confirmation yet, but even now, as it's being rolled out, people are starting to get on board with it. When it comes all the way out, then it will take a little bit of time. And remember, we're not we're not here uh, watching until the peace plan is confirmed. The Lord can take us at any time. I want you to realize that. It's just that we're in the process now. It's about to start, brothers and sisters. This is the beginning of the of the a little bit of time before it is confirmed but we could be taken just prior to it that's what I want you to understand today is the day that the Lord has made let us rejoice and be glad in it let's trust in him right look to him trust in him be joyful we are saddened in our spirit to an extent because many are still unsaved we know that when that day comes if it should be an hour from now two hours from now two weeks from now two months from now we know that when that time comes there's going to be people that miss the boat that miss the proverbial arc that miss the wonderful elevator ride to the sky this is the days we're living in to even be talking about a peace plan is is it's huge so, brothers and sisters, I just wanted to get that out to you this morning and tell you that, man, we're in the next hours, we're about to see, we are seeing history. We are seeing history being made. We are part of that history. We are going to be at some point snapped out of this earth, caught up to the heavenlies, and the, the world is going to be left wondering, what, how, uh, they're not going to understand what just happened. But then what will shine is this peace plan. You see, something dealing with the peace will just, that's the thing that they'll look at. That, that's the thing that's left, you see. The, the only thing that was left for the people once the rapture happens is this peace plan. Who will lay down their arms at that point? Hamas? Sure. Why not? Even people that were uh, perhaps insiders in Hamas that some Christian prayed for. Don't tell me there's not Christians inside these, these groups because there's always things that seem to happen that, you know, you know in, that people are like double agents, you know, and you get all this kind of stuff where, you know, someone's supposed to be this guy and he turns out to be somebody that's this guy. All right? So... There's a lot of working. God is God God is not mocked. God is not fooled. Our Lord's word is totally true. The rapture, why you wouldn't believe in the rapture is beyond me, because it is called the escape. There's a reason that the, the bride will escape what is coming. And I told someone the other day in an email, why? Or in a comment. If you can believe that the trumpets will happen, remember the seven trumpets happen during the timing of the two witnesses. And if you can believe that those trumpets, those seven trumpets, are not the wrath of God, then I guess you can believe that you're going to be here until the, with the two witnesses and until the middle. And, <laughs> excuse me. And then, so therefore, you're, a, you're not a pre-trib uh, believer. But to believe in a pre-tribulation 
you know, and seeing what's going on right now, that's why we can be, we can have a peace, we can have a joy, even through all the stormy weather, even through all the, you know, bad reports, all right? But I read Psalm 91 yesterday because a, a person in the chat uh, told me to read it. And I read it in a live uh, video that I just did the other day. And man, read that video. If you have any problems, read that video. And that's a promise from God to all of us, all right? A thousand shall fall, and ten thousand shall fall, but it shall not come nigh un us, unto us. So brothers and sisters, keep looking up. Today is the day the Lord has made. We are living in historic times. God bless you. Brother John, watch me for that great day. Getting ready to sign off. And before I do, I'll blow the shofar. And so take your earbuds out. shout or a noise or whatever all we know is we're going to be before the Lord Jesus Christ very very soon days hours days weeks maybe much but I don't think so I think we're we're very close we are on the verge of this thing happening within a period of a few months maybe but anytime anytime today included any moment so be ready brothers and sisters be let the praise well up in your heart. Praise your Lord for what he's done for you because at that moment, when that time comes, it's already done. So let's praise him now. Let's glorify him now and keep, keep him in the center of our thoughts and our day and bless others with our joy. All right? So God bless you all. Brother John, watchman for that great day. I'll see you real soon in the heavens. <laughs> I'm ready. You're ready. We're ready. Keep looking up, brothers and sisters.